Hi, and welcome back to Love Restored. I am your favorite host, Marshawn Olanio, and I'm here to talk to you today about excuses and the excuses that you are making for your spouse or your partner as to why he or she is not giving you what you're asking for or what you need. And so my question to you today is, do you find yourself saying more often than not, which turns out to be an excuse, Ah, he's just stressed out because of work, has a lot on his plate, he's just too busy with filling the blank. Like all of those at the end of the day are excuses for your spouse and ultimately leaves you not receiving nor getting what you should be getting out of your relationship or your marriage. And so sometimes we lie to ourselves because we do not want to face reality or the truth of everything is just too unbearable to handle. And so these lies are keeping you on that hamster wheel that I talk about often, going around and round and round and round, still not getting what you want unless you, this is you, it's the hamster wheel, hop off of it. Right, So you got to hop off of that hamster wheel in order to stop making excuses for your spouse for not giving you what you want. Now, I'm not talking about y'all in a season of him or her not being able to give at the level that they were once giving. I'm not talking about a season. However, I am talking about if you find yourself, whether it was the beginning of a relationship, y'all might be in the middle of a relationship, and sometimes you might even be at the end and you're still making the same excuses for your partner or for your spouse. So I want you to sit back and think and say, hmm, am I making excuses for my spouse? I mean, like, Because if you are, right, I want to give you the wake-up call that you actually need to stop doing just that because the way you lie or make excuses for your partner and how often you do it can be a sure sign that the relationship is sliding or nearing its end. Now, I want you to hear what I just said. Based off how often and the way that you lie, for your spouse's behavior, the things that he's not doing, the things that he is doing, et cetera, means that your relationship is slowly but surely either it's sliding to an end or it's just about to end because you can only do that step, you can only do that stuff, lie, make excuses for a period of time before you yourself get tired of it, before your friends, because you're telling this story or stories to somebody, right? And usually it's your friends or your close people. And those people will start to ask you questions. And guess what? The more that you keep singing the same song and telling the same story, at some point, somebody out of your circle is going to say, I thought you said that last month. Man, you've been saying that for six months. Man, you've been saying that for a year. You know you ain't about to do that. And then all of a sudden, you just get yeah, smacked in the face with your own words. Not necessarily that they're trying to use your words against you, but that's exactly what ends up happening is your words that you spoke are now being spoken from your friend's mouth, used against you. And I want you to understand and also take it in. You don't have to lie for your spouse. And the beautiful part about this is you may not even realize that the excuses that you are making for your spouse is really lies may not have ever noticed that. So we often make excuses for our spouse. We do. It's not something that is just you. It's not something that is just me. It is an innate thing because we don't want to look bad, right? But it may be deeper than that. So why is it so common for us to make excuses for our spouse? Well, number one, it could be fear of rocking the boats fear i've talked about fear before fear always shows up it's the ugly thing that keeps a lot of us stuck in the same situation right because you don't want to start over you put in too much time or maybe a little bit scary you don't want to worry about being single again right or maybe you're a person who's like i can't see 
me and living my life without my partner, my spouse. Or simply your defense mechanism is kicking in to prevent you uh, from allowing the truth to hurt you. But guess what? What I found out is that in the end, all of this boils down to you not wanting to let go of the time, energy, and effort that you invested into this relationship, that you invested into this partner, that you invested into the spouse. Like I was literally just talking to a potential client and she was telling me how she did everything right. She felt like she did everything right. They didn't have premarital sex. They went to counseling. They talked about how they wanted to build their life together. They talked about a plethora of things. And at the end of the day, they are now nearing the end because of certain things that took place, right, in the relationship. She did find herself making excuses. She did find herself kind of lying to herself. But at the end of the day, he was lying to himself as well. And it really stemmed from a big old fat lie in the beginning. Lying and making excuses always come to the surface. And we're like, why am I, why am I doing all this? Like, what is all of this for? Because a strong relationship should be a balanced investment from both of you that are in it. In the terms of the emotional and physical input into it, right? Which leads to a stable, loving relationship. And a lot of people don't have that. Maybe you're one of them. I understand. I really do. And it can be heartbreaking. It can be frustrating. It can be sad. Like when I was talking to my potential client today, it was all like, she wasn't even sad because she had already went through all of her sadness. It was more of the disbelief that I did everything right. I got me a a, a guy that's into God like I am. We're both serving in the church. We served together. We were friends. No premarital sex. We went to this. We went to that. We planned out this and planned out that. Only to still be in this situation like, whose life is this anyway? Or why did I do everything right? And so she found herself making excuses for him throughout the marriage. And she's just like, I'm tired of making excuses, right? But we got to stop making excuses when our spouse does something that disappoints us. Versus not saying anything at all. Or going to tell other people outside of the marriage or outside of your relationship that can't help you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So when you find yourself making excuses more times or more often than not, please understand that you are on a slippery slope. And the relationship is going to end much sooner than you even believe because you're already headed that way anyway because you're not getting what you want your partner or spouse may have um lied outwardly i mean outright or lied by omission and lying by omission is really you knowing the information as the person who's telling the story but because your partner or spouse didn't directly ask you this thing you just left it off Knowing that it really could have made a real difference in how the relationship is unfolding, whether it would have stopped and halted when you divulged the information or not. But basically, you took away the choice from your partner or from your spouse, and now it's literally coming back to bite you in the butt. Because anytime you take away somebody's choice, It comes back to bite you in the butt. Even if it's months, years, decades later, it will come back and bite you in the butt because everything that you built or at least seemingly built feels like it was a facade to your spouse. It feels like they have been dealt a raw deal. They're receiving the short end of the stick. Their choice was taken away. The trust is now broken. So now we're dealing with mistrust. And so everything that they're believing up until the time that the lie was revealed, they are questioning everything that came before the lie, including, did you really love me? Why did you decide to go down this road if 
fill in the blank. Whatever the lie was. And your excuses, now you're really ticked off because of the time, energy, and investment that you put into this relationship, that you put into this person. And sometimes there are red flags there that we either don't recognize or we don't want to recognize them. And I know that it is more than one category to that because I was one that didn't reckon. Like I recognized that some things were not right in my first marriage, but I didn't realize that they were actually red flags that I should have taken as serious as they were. And it's because just like many of you, I talked about it before. Many of us grew up without the the tools, the strategies, and the information that we need in order to make a healthy decision about choosing a mate, which is why so many of us have so many of us have been in relationships and or marriages, and specifically marriages, more than one time. Because our parent or guardians didn't have the information. So they couldn't pass down what they didn't have. And we got into the same cycle behind our parents following their footsteps because we're thinking as their as their child, they know what they're doing, right? And so because we believe that our parent or guardian knows what they're doing, we usually follow in their footstep, footsteps. And specifically when it comes to, our, to the relationship aspect of it, if you have an unhealthy guardian or parent showing up in a manner that you don't realize is unhealthy behaviors, unhealthy habits, and will eventually lead to a divorce anyway, unfortunately, you will be a part of the statistic like most of us have been, which is bumping your head up against the wall more than one time when it was just unnecessary to do if you had the correct information if your parents had the correct information. And so now it's up to you to start getting the correct information to start implementing into your relationship and specifically into your marriage. So we can together decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. But we have to be willing to be bolder, to be open and share how we feel in a productive way, in a productive manner. So our partners and our spouses can say and see I feel like I'm lying for you. I feel like I'm making excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse for you. Like, what's the real deal? What's really going on? Do you really want to be here? Do you not want to be here? And those are those tough tough conversations that we need to have so we're not just wasting years after years after year feeling like I'm putting in all this effort and I'm just getting no ROI. And what is ROI? ROI is return on your investment. And so at the end of the day, instead of you either number one, getting into a marriage, you can just end the relationship number two, end the relationship much faster. But because a lot of us don't know what questions to ask, is that serious? Should I be worried about it? Should I not worry about it? Should I go ahead? Should I not? We have some reservations, but sometimes we don't say anything. And then I even have some clients that have gone so far as sending out the invitations and now that they have taken that step they feel like they need to go through with it but something deep down in their belly was telling them not to do it and then the very thing that they didn't want to happen ends up happening anyway which is that breakup but specifically to that scenario that divorce still happens when in the beginning they really could have just sucked up lost the money for the venue and the food and all the dress and all the other stuff lost the money in the beginning and not have to pay out thousands upon thousands of dollars later on because didn't listen to your gut. And this is on both sides of the um, spectrum. The man and the woman do this. Not everybody, of course, but those who actually have that gut feeling, they don't lean in and listen to it. And of course, again, it's not everybody, but a lot of it, was the excuses that you didn't even realize that you were making, which ultimately turned into lie after lie after lie after lie. Because once you start telling this stuff to other people and they just want to do a follow-up, not even trying to accuse you of anything, they just want to see how you're doing, how life is going for you, how you and your spouse are doing. And then you start telling them that, you know, things are going X, Y, and Z. And they're like, hold on. Didn't you talk about that months ago? 
Y'all still in the same situation? So we have to be better. We have to get better at stop making the excuses for our spouse. Be bold and open, you know, and and really just share what you're actually feeling, what you're going through and not holding those things in. Because at the end of the day, if you are holding all of this stuff in, then only you are hurting yourself at the end of the day. Big picture, you're hurting the family, you're hurting um, your spouse, but right there, you're hurting yourself. So we just got to think about these things and be honest about what's actually happening. Be honest about why it's happening by having those tough conversations and not stopping when it's just the first answer given or you're blown off or, you know, the shutdown comes like you really have to be, I want to use the word relentless a little bit because this is information that you need to have that you should be privy to. So some of the things and some of the excuses that I often hear from my clients and when they're making excuses for their spouse is their poor behavior or even the poor choices that they are making, right? They find themselves at the dinner parties, right? Or just hanging out with the girls and maybe he didn't show up or maybe he was super late or maybe he, you know, getting drunk all the time or maybe he's not um, bringing home the bacon. Maybe he's gambling away, maybe he's drinking away, whatever the thing is, right? So not making excuses for the poor choices that he's making as well as the poor behaviors that he is doing, right? Because if your expectations are not being met time and time again, and you can't, don't, or won't face them, then your relationship will not succeed anyway. It just will not. So that boldness that I talked about earlier, those tough conversations that I mentioned earlier, like I'm always going to mention the tough conversations because this is where that connection that so many of us say that we want, that we all need, this is where it comes from. The vulnerability of being able to just show up authentically with your spouse about what's actually happening and why it's happening. Because time and time again, the stuff gets old. And they get old real quick. Like, I got you on a couple times. Here and there. I got you. Got your back. But over and over and over and over again, like I'm on a broken record. And you know, I don't know if you know about a broken record. Because some of you may be too young for records. But when records, when they scratching, it's like a hump. It's like a, 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 yeah, like a little heel in the record. And it'll just, and that's kind of how most of us sound. That's how most of us are living our lives. On a broken record, singing the same thing over and over and over again. And guess what? At some point, you, at some point, you, are going to have to make a choice, a tough choice in order for you to get what you want out of life, in order for you to get what you want out of this relationship. And maybe, just maybe, the other person is done. Maybe you're done. But you'll never have a successful relationship without facing the thing that is plaguing your relationship over and over and over again. You never will. So don't make excuses if he's always canceling or rescheduling time with you, right? I have another client and we were literally just talking about this because she's in a relationship and they're still dating and they live all, also they are long distance, right? So long distance dating and they both have very demanding jobs, but she's still finding that she is reaching out and saying, hey, when we're going to see each other, when we're going to do, when we're going to blah, blah, blah. And his schedule is just very busy. And there are valid reasons for his schedule to be busy. But he also can't be in the type of relationship that she wants as well as needs in order to meet her needs. 
right? So without going down the rabbit hole, I was listening to her speak. And the question that I posed to her, which is the question I'm going to pose to you as well, which is how often are you going to accept not being a priority in his life and on his schedule? Because the truth of the matter is this, when we want to do something, when we want to see somebody, when we want to be around people that we like, love, and need to be around, we find a way to be around those people. We will fit you in our schedule. We will say, hey, I'm in a season of X, Y, and Z. Are you willing to deal with this for right now? Because I know that this is going to end. Because there are some compromises at times. And sometimes you're going to be getting less out of a relationship than Um, then you believe that you should get. It happens. There's an ebb and flow in every relationship. However, you're all, and what I pointed out to her is, however, you're still dating. So if you decide to take this relationship further and then you guys get engaged as well as married and his schedule still stays the same, you will not be able to complain about y'all not spending time together because y'all wasn't spending time together during the dating stages and you still went forward. Yes, I want to be with you. Yes, I'm willing to deal with this. When in your heart of hearts, you're really not willing to deal with that. So why set yourself up for failure in the beginning? Because right now this is the beginning because you guys are still dating. You've been dating for a while, but you're still dating. He hasn't proposed. There's no engagement. So no engagement. There's definitely no wedding. There's no marriage. There's no vows. And so you have to remember that we're not getting in these relationships and definitely not getting to the marriages off of potential. He has to already be established and not financially established, although that's definitely something that you should consider as well. But I'm specifically talking about him making sure that you are a priority in his life. You two trying to build upon the relationship together and it's not one-sided. Him putting in just as much effort to see you as you put in to see him. Because otherwise, you are setting yourself up for failure and loneliness when you know that you are a person who needs and craves being around your mate, who who likes and loves and even needs to be touched and held. So you're setting yourself up for failure. And so we have to stop making excuses because that was one of her things. He's so busy, has a demanding schedule. And again, all of it's valid, but it's not valid if you're trying to be in a healthy relationship. It's not. Because money ain't everything. We know that we, each and every one of us need money to survive. That's that's a proven fact. We know that. But if it's everything to you when you wake up, when you fall asleep, where do you fit your mate in on your timetable to make sure that you are cultivating a healthy relationship, to make sure that you are cultivating a healthy marriage, to make sure when and if you two bring children into it, that they see a healthy relationship, what a healthy marriage looks like, what mom and dad's roles look like. It could be different, doesn't have to be traditional. It is just something that they need to see you two working together, not it all being on one spouse's shoulders 100% of the time, because that is a heavy burden to uh, bear. It's a heavy load to carry. Like this is some of the things that we don't talk about when we get into our relationships and and you hear about it. But until you live it, 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 it's different. It's different. It's different. So understanding that a pattern is different than a mistake is something that we need to understand. And so a pattern is we scheduling a date for Monday night, whatever, right? Monday night is our date night, but you have now canceled date night almost two months in a row. That's a pattern. It's not, it's no longer a mistake. Forgetting or rescheduling like, ah, 
over the time. You know, I know this is our date night, even though it's never good to reschedule date nights, but we get it. Life happens, right? So need to reschedule date night. Ah, that's a mistake. All right, cool. But now you did it week after week after week after week after week after week, month, 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 month. This is not a priority for you. So don't act like it is. And then you as the person who is getting rescheduled on all the time need to recognize that this is now a pattern. And we all do what we really want to do with the people that we really want to be with and do it with. And that's just a fact, Jack. It's just a fact. We want to be with and be around the people that make us feel wonderful. Excuse me. These people make us feel great. These people make us look in the mirror and want to be better. There is something about the person that you won't really want to hang around with. There's something about him or her that makes you feel wonderful, that makes you feel excellent, that makes you feel like I like being in his or her company. So those are the people that you're going to make sure are in your company. You're going to make them a priority. And so if you can't do that with your spouse, but you're doing it with everybody else, it's not like you're not able to make commitments or you're seeing that your spouse or partner is not able to make commitments. He's making commitments with everybody else except you. That's a problem. So we have to stop making excuses when we notice these patterns. It's no longer a mistake if it's happened month and month and month and month and month. It's no longer a mistake. That's a pattern. And we have to recognize it as so and face it for what it actually is versus what we want it to be. Also, you yourself have to stop making excuses for not making your own necessary changes in order to change and own your life. And whatever those changes are, I can't tell you, but you know what those changes are. And if you don't know, you need to figure out what those changes are because you are the only one that can change your life. You are the only one that can literally change the trajectory of the way your life is going. You and only you. You can listen to a ton of podcasts. You can listen to a ton of audio books. You can come here and listen to Love Restored week after 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 week week and do nothing with the information. It means nothing. You have to be willing to do the hard things in order to get the life that only people that are bold enough and strong enough to do that. Those are the people that have their successful lives, specifically in their relationships, specifically in their relationships. But usually how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So if they have a beautiful, loving relationship, they probably got a beautiful relationship with money a beautiful relationship with uh, their friends, a beautiful relationship with their family because they they understand how important relationships are. And I'm not just talking about loving relationships, right? Relationships overall, you are in a relationship with everything and everybody, whether you realize that or not. So you yourself have to also start working on your own problem or problems because it's not always your partner's fault why things are going the way that they're going. We have a tendency to always see that it's our partner or our spouse, but that's not always true because what are you doing? What could you be doing differently in order to get the different results? Because the love that you want and that you expect to have really starts with you. It does. It starts with you. So start making the changes that you know that you need to make in order to benefit you, your life, your relationship. And that absolutely means stop making the excuses when your partner or spouse is not showing up in a manner that you know benefits you, benefits the family, benefits your overall life together. My last tip is most problems will get resolved if three things happen. Okay, the first one, you literally got to face it. I've already said that you must face it, must face the problem or problems in order to get them resolved. The second thing is you have to accept them. You have to accept that there are problems there. The third thing is that you have to handle that problem or get it resolved. 
and I know I said three, but it's actually four. The fourth thing is literally let all that junk go. That's how most problems get resolved. Face it, accept it, resolve it or handle it and let it go. It needs to go bye-bye forever in order for you to stop making those excuses and be able to move your life forward instead of staying stuck where it actually is. If you need some help, I'm your girl for it. You need some help to stop making excuses or you are a black woman who is interested in making sure that you are around other black women that are dealing with some of the same issues within your relationship and you want to be held accountable as well as feel like you're a part of a group and you're not alone, right? As well as be able to come and share as well as listen to help, but get the help that you need. Definitely sign up for a strategy coaching conversation where I can help you decide if we would be a good fit to work together. And the link is bit.ly forward slash help my relationship and the H in help is capital. Again, that's bit.ly forward slash help my relationship. I am your favorite shift relationship strategist, Marshawn Alanio, and this is Love Restored.